Welcome in to an emergency podcast of the DNVR Avalanche podcast. It is about 4 p.m. on Tuesday, and it has already been a day for the Colorado Avalanche. Uh, quite a few things going on here today. Nathan Rudolph and A.J. Hayfley with you. The Avs, they started out with an expectation of a couple of injuries, of Pavel Francos and Andre Burakovsky. Uh, the expectation was they might play 11 forward, 7 defensemen going into tonight. And then... Uh, things kept developing up until just now where the Avs have traded Ian Cole to the Minnesota Wild for Greg Patteron. Um, yeah, that happened. Uh, there's salary cap reasons to this. There's the Avs have other defensemen reasons to this. We're going to jump into all of it, break everything down a little bit for you. Where do you want to start, EJ? Should we start with AJ, rather? Do you want to start with the trades or do you want to start with these injuries? Um, we'll start with the trades. Okay. Inju- I think the injuries are really a super minor deal. Sure. So from, from what it sounded like today and from some of the follow-up that I did, it, it does, it does not sound like this is a long-term thing. Yeah. Both guys could be ready to go on Thursday. So cool. So have have a couple a- of out and it just doesn't really matter that much in the long yeah. run. Yeah. So. I think um, I think this is more than anything. I think this is a confidence play in the kids because you have to know Eric Johnson's getting hurt. Like, yeah, it's that's, inevitable. It's, it's part of an avalanche season. Is the time yeah, when you, get you just that shit is happening. <laughs> And so you have to guard against that. Ian Cole was a really good, valuable guard against an Eric Johnson injury. And I don't the the talk about moving Ian Cole didn't make a lot of sense because why why just give up depth? Yep. And that's exactly what they did. They got a cheaper, worse version of Ian Cole in order to save one point two million dollars. Now, Greg Pattern Pattern is fine. Like, he's not a bad defenseman. Um, he's fine. He's a perfectly safe bottom pairing, like rotational type of guy. like a seventh D. Yep. Um, basically, he's an older version of the guy that's going to get into the lineup tonight, and the the guy that they got in the Chicago deal and Dennis Gilbert. Yeah. Um. Just. You know, like it's strictly coal for okay. Patter and the abs got worse. Is the point you're making here? Yeah, absolutely. From a talent, talent, from a talent uh, standpoint, they their their team defense is definitely worse after this deal. Ian Cole had a great year last year. Uh, I know people have been kind of tough on he hasn't looked good through two games. You know what? He didn't look good through two games last year either. Granted, he was coming off of double hip surgery, so there was a bit of a caveat there that we were all willing to to kind of give him time. But we were willing to give him time this year because he's proven that he's a quality NHL player. Yep. And there was an expectation of of that spot, whether it being Cole and now Patter, and going to be a rotational guy anyway. Yeah, um, and with Patteron, like but this taxi squad stuff, like they're they're not going to acquire this guy just to throw him on waivers and then lose him for free, right? Um, it's not. Yeah, I'm. Ugh. We can we can scratch that out of the out of the realm of possibilities. Um, so Gilbert will play tonight. Bowen Byram won't play, uh, and I know people are going to get mad about that, but. He's had one practice with the team. Um, I guess. I guess the Heat they had they had morning skate, so two practices with the team. Um, Just to be clear, is the expectation to, for the Avs still to run eleven seven Gilbert and EJ? Correct. Okay, and then obviously Timmins. A little bit of the maybe part of the reason that this got done is especially game two, very very solid from Connor Timmins. He has looked quite good. Um, which gives the Az a little bit more defensive flexibility. Yeah, and I don't really care about the eleven seven thing. They've got the 
most likely this just means a second shift for Nathan McKinnon, which is a problem for the other team, not the Avs. Bettner regularly does it anyway. So. Right. <laughs> Bettner sneaks him out there onto the ice with other teams too, and it's just like, okay, whatever. This is fine. Yep. Um, Pattern is... Pattern probably won't play tonight, but at least he doesn't have to go through the quarantine protocols. Um, Minnesota being in Anaheim inside the California bubble. Apparently they're just, the abs are just bussing Ian Cole up there and then picking Pattern up and bringing him back. It's going to be a lonely and weird bus ride. Yeah. For both guys, I think. Um, significantly worse for Ian Cole, who goes from, a trying to keep a job on a surefire cup contender to he's gonna he's gonna play um he'll play on and honestly that's already a good wild defense it got better yep like putting Ian Cole on that third pairing we always talked about Ian Cole on the third pairing in Colorado was a testament to how good that defense was last year now how talented it was this year even more so because Taves is in the mix and EJ is now in the mix and Timmons is now in the mix and Bowen Byram is now in the mix. And it's just, it's too talented of a defense. Um, It's hard for me to, to swallow the idea that they couldn't get more for Ian Cole though. I understand that. I, I understand that the financial realities uh, make it tougher to move money, but I mean, you couldn't, you couldn't throw like a third round pick in on that or something, but I mean, even like a fifth round pick, they couldn't, they couldn't extract just for the fact that they're going to, they're taking on the, they're retaining salary and they're getting worse yep. and they couldn't get any kind of a draft pick whatsoever out of it. Like it's just, I would feel, I would feel a lot better about this. If $1.2 million in the salary cap was basically worth a fifth round pick or something, had it been a seventh round pick, I'd, feel fine about that too although come draft day i would have wished that they had traded it so <laughs> maybe maybe I'm all for the best in the long run yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. um so, so like the 1.2 million that that allows them to add another player to their roster and so just, the only the only forwards that they have available to them right now are Kiefer sherwood and martin cow to Those be are the clear only uh, just in case anyone doesn't know, the Evs did retain 800k of Ian Cole's yeah. salary. Um, Pattern was making 2.25, Ian Cole's 4.25. So the 800k retention means the Avs saved in total at 1.2 million. Um, did the Evs absolutely need to retain the salary? Maybe not, but it was getting really, I, really tight. It's not just tight for them though. They could not. Uh, Minnesota could not do the deal straight up. Yeah. Without the retention, they, they are, had to have Cole retained. Yeah, yeah, because of the difference in salary, um, the Avs get a million dollars the other way, and the the Wild get a million closer to the cap. So, okay, cool, it's fine. It it, it it's is what it is. Deal. Like it's what, this is not a huge deal. Like here's here's what this has done for the Avs setting up long term. I think it's pretty easy to transition pattern into a seventh D role for the rest of the season. And the question is who ends up being that other extra D. Now EJ is expected to jump into the lineup pretty much every night until he gets hurt at least. So in the immediate it's gonna be a battle between Timmons, Gilbert, and Byram. Um right mm-hmm. now it's Tim and Spot to lose, I think. I do too. Um, I, I think if anything, uh, this this deal might give them an excuse for a longer runway for Timmons. Yeah. To just see. Because Timmons, through no fault of his own, Timmons could go out there and play the best game of his life tonight, and he was probably going to lose his job to Eric Johnson. Yep. <laughs> um, and then and then Byram later on in the week. So, but, now, now you know with Cole out of out of the way, it's a really cold way to 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 phrase that, and I don't I don't mean for it to come across that way. Uh, but with Cole out of the picture, 
Timmons, this is this is make or break for Timmons. This is go go get a job and absolutely put pressure on them to keep you in the lineup. Yep. And then if he because if he can do that, then they really have they really have a serious um, they they have a serious decision to make on how they want to handle Byram. Like everybody's freaking out right now because why are why are they not doing this one thing? They could do this other thing that I would prefer, but like Byram is going to play. At the, some point. Look at it this way. In the next five days, the Avs play four games. Six days. In the next six days, the Avs play four games. Um, So, including a back-to-back in the middle without an extra day off. So, don't be surprised at all if you see these defensemen rotate over the next couple of games. Be that Byram, Timmons, Patteron, Gilbert. Pick one. Yeah, I don't. Um, if if Byram has to wait a week to get into the games so that he can get into practices and he can do all this, so does Patteron. Yeah, and at that point, like that dude needs to just step back. I mean, why would the, why would you play this guy? Yeah, I. It, I don't see how Patteron has the inside edge, especially if the Evs are willing to play Gilbert tonight. I don't see how he, Patteron has the inside edge on anyone. The only thing with Gilbert is that Gilbert has been in camp and he's been practicing with the team every day and that yeah. he's like and you know that they're they're going to find an excuse to to play a guy like that guy for sure at some point. Yeah. Right. But but that's what I'm saying is they're finding excuses right now to get a Gilbert in. They're finding excuses yeah. right now to get a Byram in, to keep a Timmons in. Yeah. They're finding ways not to play a Greg Patterin. Yeah, which is what we always talk about wanting them to do stop finding reasons to play veterans and play the better players, play your higher upside guys. This jives with that. You know, when you might be mad that they're not playing Martin Couch so they can play Dennis Gilbert tonight. But other than that, I mean, they're yeah. this, this is, this is kind of the thing you want. They're not letting Ian Cole. They're certainly not going to let Greg Patteron get in the way of Bowen Byram taking a job or Connor Timmons right. taking a job. It's They had every reason to. We talked about why it would be unlikely for them to just turn the keys over to all of these guys because they're a Stanley they're a Stanley Cup contender with a super young defense now with, you know, with Byram getting ready to take somebody's job with Timmons trying to stay full time. Like these these are guys with like seven NHL games between them. It's and you know they got worse in this deal, but I think it's I think the the theory crafting behind it in terms of we just want to play the kids and we do solid by our veterans like Ian Cole. We give them we put them in positions where they can go and play. Addition now, by subtraction is not the right word, but the Avs gave themselves or their kids on defense certainly an opportunity by doing it this way. Um, Byram probably more specifically than the rest, but yeah, I mean, you put it correctly, right? The, Ian Cole, the options were the Avs play him over the kids. He transitions into a seventh D rule or something like this, where he ends up moving to a team where he can play certainly in their, their defense, if not even maybe some top four time, depending on how things shake out in Minnesota, uh, now that's it's not an issue. The Avs have cleared up a roadblock. This is a tough question because they're kids. They're going to be inconsistent. A Byram's going to be inconsistent. Probably even a Gilbert's going to have some inconsistency. But are the Avs a better hockey team with Gilbert or Byram or whoever in the lineup over Ian Cole? I think the ceiling is higher. Sure, I think that part's. A definite yes. <laughs> the, the floor changes depending on which guy is in. Because if Gilbert is in, you don't really know. If Byram is in, you really don't know. But there's so much room for growth with Byram that you're like, you'll roll the dice. Yep. Um, I don't... Uh, I see chat has questions about Cole blowing up the locker room. This was This has been problematic for him in his career. Uh, it's one of the reasons St. Louis moved in. It's one of the reasons Pittsburgh moved him. Because 
when he started to get down there on the depth chart, there was unhappiness there. He wanted to play. You know, I I don't I don't want to say Cole would have blown up the locker room because I think that's probably too much. But I think that this removes the element of a really proud veteran who thinks he can still play, who's in a contract year, by the way. If the Avs just kept this dude and sunk him in his contract the year. Career is he, basically over, yeah. Yeah, he's looking at like a PTO or something next year. And this is an underrated thing that we talk about every so often with Joe Sackett is that he does right by his guys. He does right by veteran players who have done a lot and accomplished a lot in the league. You can't accomplish much more than Ian Cole has in the league. You know, a first-round pick who's played a decade and won multiple Stanley Cups – um, getting him, giving him a chance to go and play somewhere where he can play for his next contract. Joe Sackick did a solid with in moving Ian Cole. Now you're not going to prioritize doing that guy a solid, but getting what you want out of the deal while also putting that player in a good position is something that Sackick has made. He he is he has made sure to do in the past. Yep. Hey. So. At this point, Sakic is extremely well known for being very amicable with his players' desires. So, yeah, and no, he's not sinking Patteron's career. Uh, Patteron is Patteron is going to continue to be the exact guy he's always been. He was a, a seventh or eight for his whole career, basically. So a far, a seventh or eighth rotational guy who's only going to get to play substantial minutes if there are injuries. Now he's just in a place where there it's going to require several injuries. So. Yeah. I'm, I'm, this is the, the big, the big thing is, is that this is a move for the kids. This is a, this is a vote of confidence for the youth. The first mid season aggressively like this, the first time we've really seen the Evs do something like this under Joe Sackick. Yeah. Um, we've seen youth graduate in the past simply because the Evs just didn't have the depth or talent, but over the last couple of years, we've seen a lot of barriers get put in the kids' ways unless they just go out and play ridiculous and earn it. This is the opposite of that. This is the first time we're seeing Sackick say, we think we have kids that are ready. Yeah. And I mean, we've seen them turn the keys over to kids when they think that they are they had it ready to rock. Yep. You know, they got Sam Gerard, who had played like four games in the NHL. And was still junior eligible. And at 19 years old, they said, screw this. We're just going to keep him. And they're paying, they're reaping the reward from that now. The same, the same thing with Kale McCarr. Obviously, like, Kale McCarr was, like, a prodigious talent. Like, the, an outsized talent. A blue chip prospect. The same is true for Bowen Byram. Yep. Like, this is, this. all of this jives with exactly how they've operated the last few years. Instead of going out and getting Bobby Ryan and Vlad Nemestikov to take up spots in their bottom six, they turn the keys over to Tyson Jost, JT Comfer, and Alex Kerfoot all at the same time. They wanted they wanted a youth movement. They want to continue to get a little bit younger where they have the talent. They want to let their, their most talented guys play. That's what's happening. I don't any anybody that's genuinely like upset about this for any sort of hockey related reasons is either reading too much into it or projecting because this is all about clearing the decks for Timmons and Byron to take jobs, keep jobs and become the face of the defense. It's certainly a move that in the long run will have a positive impact. I I don't think there's any doubt about that. Um, I see the chat talking about it a little bit how much is there something more to this? Is there an expectation with a little bit of extra cap space they freed up that they might look to do something else? Or is this just flexibility? I mean, it should come as no shock to anybody that they've been involved in the Dubois stuff. Yeah. Um, 25 teams in the NHL have been involved in the Dubois stuff. It's not. You're negligent if you haven't at least asked. Yeah, I'm that. sorry, yeah. but it's not a shocking revelation that this is about PLD, that, that, that PLD and the ABS, or the ABS have inquired about PLD and and danced around it. Look, if they have, if the extra $1.2 million ends up factoring into that and this ends up being one of those galaxy brain moves that people always think when they're like, 
I don't understand this trade. This must be step one to something bigger. And then nothing ever comes. Like, if, it, if that actually ends up happening, that this is step one and something else in PLD isn't having three weeks, then this is like watching a first pick, pitch strike on a in an at bat where you eventually hit a home run. Yeah. Like, you're setting it up for something. So, cool. Whatever. But this, this is uh, on the surface, on its face. They get a little bit worse, but with the intention of turning the keys over to the young players. And for the record, uh, Patterson's contract is up at the end of the year, just like Cole's was. So yeah. the you know, zero impact beyond this season. Uh, right. And we've watched, I mean, we just watched them, you know, Mark Barbario, Kevin Connaughton, Mark Alt, all those guys just left in the last off season. Yep. So uh, it's not, it's not, it's not any kind of guarantee that this becomes a long-term relationship. For sure. There's I you said it best I think when you said clearing the decks for the kids. So, I yep. mean, it's kind of a weird day so far for the Avs, but they still play the Kings tonight. Sounds like we'll see Dennis Gilbert and Eric Johnson both in the lineup. So, yeah. should be fun, should be interesting. It sucks to lose Ian Cole. Of course. Like he really is the he really is the personality that everybody says that he is. He's a great quote. He's very entertaining. He bit my head off in the locker room one time. <laughs> that made me feel really bad. And then um he and I were always cool still. Like it was he's just a good dude and a huge he loves Notre Dame. Huge Irish fan. Well, he was in the right org with the Avs then. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, yeah. it's not. Uh, it's not that. It's really just not that. Like this, ultimately, is kind of a just shrug your shoulders because yep. we were talking about Bowen Byron taking this guy's job anyway. So the the major impact of this trade, funnily enough, yeah. has nothing to do with the actual trade, whether yeah. that be it being a predecessor to some other move, or it's simply just be clearing room for, for Bo and Byram. PLD. PLD. <laughs> That's why they're holding Burakovsky out is because he's part of the PLD deal. Oh man, that would be insane. <laughs> no, it was not, it was not Voracek style. Uh, when Cole got after me a little bit, it was nothing like that. That's a, that's like a long, like that's, that's my greatest fear. Let me tell you is that, I do something to a player and I'm not accountable for it for such a long time that a guy just like has enough of you yeah. <laughs> to the point where that guy asks a question and it's like, <sighs> please don't do that to me. Does it even matter what I say? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I will say um, the ads might've just made life harder for themselves if they end up with the first seed and they have to play Minnesota and, Ian Cole's got a yeah. chip on his shoulder. Yeah. Ian, Ian Cole's in the lineup instead of instead of Greg Patter, and then it's like, well, life gets a, just that much tougher. Well, but it's if be that ends up being the difference in a series, I mean, yeah, as of going astray, if Ian Cole is the the game breaker, I think. But <laughs> yeah, we'll have to wait and see whether it's it's an opportunity for Byram or, or Gilbert or whoever. Or if there's something more to this, uh, Avs play tonight at 8 p.m. against L.A., Mountain Time, that is. AJ and I, and Evan as well, will be live after the game with our post-game show as well. So be sure to catch us there. Be sure to like and subscribe to the YouTube channel. That helps us out a ton, as always. Um, yeah. Any, any Avs, other final thoughts? The Avs are definitely going to have trouble with L.A. They've had trouble with L.A. their entire existence, regardless of how good or bad either team has been. They always have a hard Almost time all of California, them. honestly, they struggle with. <laughs> yeah. There was a time where they handled the Ducks okay, uh, but that time is also over. So, <laughs> so yeah. Uh, AJ, you're working on an article, I think, uh, the same kind of stuff we just talked about here. Yeah, I'm working on just your basic trade piece. I'll, so, have, some, I'll have some charts and graphs and stuff, because I always do. But There you go. So if you want to read it, We'll have that for you over on the dnvr.com in a little bit. But that's it for this emergency podcast. Hope you all enjoyed. Hope you all are excited for the game tonight. We are out of here, and we will talk to you again probably 
around 11 p.m. Game will probably be over maybe a little before that, but after the game. We'll see you then. Take it easy, y'all.